The show starts with our MC, Ryudo, complimenting his crush. Runa is the prettiest girl in his class, and he cannot stop saying how beautiful she is. Ryuto is a nerdy introvert of the class. He feels like he is not even in the same league as this girl. He wants to confess feelings to her, but he feels like turning to ashes if he gets closer to her. Maybe he will keep his distance from her and keep himself to the lower part he thinks he is in. In the next scene, we see him with Runa in her room as she undresses. We don't know how he got here and why she is asking if they are going to sleep or not. Well, that is one hell of a whom I would say. In the school, the PTA meeting is going on and everyone is filling up forms in the classroom. MC cannot help but feel awed by Runa's beauty. He is constantly looking at her and how cute her little reactions are. Every boy in the class is talking about her, how she changes her boyfriends every two months and everyone is in the race to be her next one. Boys are making bets to talk to her while MC knows he wouldn't even dare try because he would just get shot after getting the first word out. He knows no one in the class even talks to him except only two of his friends, and even those who are nerdy like him, so that isn't even something to be proud of. You are not alone, I think that is enough. He is thinking about all that when Runa comes up to him asking if she can borrow a pencil. This took him by surprise as he got the pencil out of his geometry. Giving her the pencil, he notices her melons and how he is almost about to get a peek in when he stops himself. He has to control his rush of feelings until she is gone. After writing what she wanted to, Runa gives MC back his pencil, thanking him. He cannot believe she just came up to him and talked to him. But again, he knows how open she is with everyone so it's nothing new. After the class, MC is with his friends, Nishi and Ichi, talking about someone named Ken. Barbie's hype is everywhere. They are both frustrated that their fascination with Ken is hurting their grades when MC tries to relate. They both know he always gets good grades and makes a deal. That whoever gets the best grades among them has to do what the person with the worst grade will tell them. He knows he is gonna be the former but has to agree with this. After the exam, Nishi and Ichi showed their results and they were both low while MC got average grades. Ichi got the worst grade so he is going to do whatever he is going to say. Ichi comes up with something MC never wanted to do, and it is that he has to confess his feelings to the girl he likes. MC cannot believe he is going to do this. He tries to sway them away from this thought telling them he doesn't even like anyone when he remembers Runa suddenly, after seeing him freeze a bit, his friends know he has someone. Ah, busted my friend. He has to do it now. After school, he is waiting for Runa outside the school while Ichi and Nishi are secretly watching him dwell on this horror of his. MC doesn't want to do this, but his friends are pretty important to him, so he is doing this just for them. MC has put a note in Runa's locker so that she will know where to come so they can talk. He gets the feeling that she is not coming, but suddenly, he sees her coming right here. This gets his heart pumping, and he cannot believe he is going to talk to her finally. She asks if this is him, showing him the note. He said he wanted to talk about something, and Runa wanted to hear it. MC is all shy and cannot even get a word out when Runa notices it. She wants him to loosen up as they are both classmates. In his mind, MC is structuring his sentences like what he is going to say when he realizes how screwed he is. He knows he is going to get rejected, but maybe this is good for him. He wants her to reject him so he can get his head straight. He tells her that he likes her, but Runa doesn't just reject him. He tells her how cute she is and wants to go out with her. He is expecting to no know when Runa agrees with this. These anime characters are so lucky and not so real in these situations. She agrees to go out with him and wants to know what they are going to do now. As they are dating now, she wants to walk home together. Nishi and Ichi are left shocked. Walking home, MC is constantly wondering if this is a dream or not. How can he walk with all the girls? She asks how to pronounce his name and actually likes his name, Ryudo. MC is getting way too happy with this. He knows how all of this ends with a dump. He knows she is just easing him and he is going to get dumped any time now. But that is not the case as it seems. He asks why she agreed to go out with him because he knows she didn't even know he existed. She doesn't even know anything about him. But he also doesn't know anything about her as she put it. So it is okay. And she actually likes him. This is because he told her that he liked her. Runa believes he will get a feeling that she goes out with anyone who tells her that he likes her. But she has her limits as she explains. Her only red flag is people with dry upper lip or something like that. She believes that even if the feelings are shallow in the start, they can be developed if they date one another long enough. She knows they can do that if they put their heart into it. 
but NC thought she dated boys for only two months or so. She explains that she has never developed feelings for anyone and has always been faithful, but it has never worked out for her. Then why does she date so often? They are on the train and MC still cannot believe all of this is happening. Her station is here and she gets off. MC goes to walk her home because she asked to. He is obviously new to all of this. They reach her home and MC is surprised he is standing outside Runa's house. He gets freaked out and wants to go home when Runa invites him in. Telling him that her parents and grandma are gone for a while, MC comes in. They go up straight to her room and MC isn't going in. It is too damn quick for him, but Runa is making it look like all of this is very easy. But again, she has done all of this way too many times so he should expect this confidence. Coming into her room, MC is blown away by the scent of the room. It is all too cute and pretty, and everything smells like Runa. She goes to get something to drink and asks if barley tea is awk for him. MC gets a little comfortable and his inner man desires begin to come out. He sees her drawer and wants to peek in to see all of her clothes. He tries to control himself but can't. He finally opens the drawer and takes a look when Runa comes back with the tea. MC freaks out and hits his head. Runa puts the tea down and comes to close her drawer thinking she has left it open by mistake. She starts showing him the clothes she got recently for the girls' night out and some other events. MC is just staring at her and how cute she is with the little things she likes. They have their tea and Runa sits on her bed. Inviting MC to sit right next to her on the bed, MC is shocked. He cannot believe he is going to sit right next to the prettiest girl of his class. Seeing him stare at her like that, Runa gets the feeling that he wants to sleep with her. She realizes this and starts undressing thinking she is going to do anything her boyfriend wants. She asks if he wants to take a shower first or not but MC does not have words to utter. He cannot believe she is offering things like these. He asks what she is doing when Runa feels very confused. She thought they were going to do it right now but MC doesn't want it like this. But MC suddenly realizes all about her. Runa explains that she thought boyfriends only wanted to do it and it was like a duty to her. That if she didn't sleep with them, they would run off to some other girls. Everything makes sense now for MC. Realizing that she got dumped by her boyfriend, not the other way around. She is actually a really sincere girl but people take advantage of her quality. Her exes only wanted her body and not anything else. MC tells her that he thinks this is too soon for them. He wants to do it but not like this. What if he is a pervert and a really terrible guy inside? Runa has never experienced this conversation and thought she was just supposed to offer her body to her boyfriend like that. She asks if he wants to call it off for now. MC really wants to do it but still calls it off. Well, now he deserves her right. Walking back, MC tells her she has to value herself and the relationship is not about sleeping together. He wants to do it but then when the time is right. Runa realizes that this is what a true relationship feels like. He tells her that he wants her to do it when she actually wants to, not like she is doing her duty. Runa is excited because she really thinks this is something new and their relationship is going to get stronger. Going home, MC realizes that he really likes Runa, but regrets the decision to call it off. The next day, Ryuto again can't believe that he is now dating Shirakawa as he enters the school. However, it bothers Ryuto the fact that he is still a boring nerd who somehow got lucky. Ryuto then receives a text message from Runa who tells him that she overslept today and therefore she might skip school today. As a professional introvert, Ryuto hesitates because the boy doesn't know how to respond. So he ends up advising her that if she bikes to the station and hurries over, she can actually make it for the first period and wishes her good luck. While the class is going on, Ryuto continues to talk with Runa through texts. The boy seems worried if Runa will be able to make it or not. But that's where the door opens and Runa makes her entry to the class. During the lunch break, Ryuto and the boys meet at the rooftop where Ryuto tells how his day went yesterday. Well, it freaks the boys out when they get to know that Ryuto actually went to Runa's home on their first date. Yusuke and Ren even come to the conclusion that Ryuto must have done it then and graduated to manhood. So Ryuto clarifies himself and tells them that he somehow controlled himself in that intense moment, even though Runa was down for it. Bro is oversharing way too much. And of course, the boys then scold Ryuto for not scoring a goal on Runa's pitch. Yusuke then insults Ryuto by saying he is totally unpopular. And when he got a once in a lifetime opportunity, he skipped it. Though Ryuto then mentions that he might get more opportunities like that, besides, they are dating each other now. Anyways, later as Ryuto returns to the classroom, Runa reaches out to him and tells him that she had a dream of him. 
but before Ryuto can reply to her, he notices a pink-haired girl is dead staring at him, so Ryuto walks away. After that, Runa starts talking to him more at school, but due to that, Ryuto has created many enemies who think Runa should break up with him. Upon asking, Runa reveals that she has told Nicole, the pink-haired girl, about her relationship with Ryuto, since they are best friends. Well, that's fair because Ryuto also told about his relationship to two of his mates. What bothers Ryuto are the looks everyone is giving him, therefore he wants Runa to stop talking with him at school and keep their relationship secret. Though Runa doesn't mind that, but she wants a specific time when she would talk to her guy. Therefore, Ryuto suggests they should meet on weekends, and so on Saturday the couple decides to go on a date. Hence, we later see Ryuto exaggerating about where he should take Runa out. While the boy is thinking about her, Runa makes a video call and asks Ryuto where he is taking her. With so much pressure, Ryuto ends up suggesting to go for a movie. But since Ryuto's purpose for a date is to know more about Runa, therefore the girl cancels the movie plan and tells him that she'll host the date tomorrow. And so, the very next day, the couple goes to a mall and goes shopping. Seeing Runa in casual clothes confirms for Ryuto that she is a gyro. Even the girls around the shop can't stop admiring Runa's beauty and believe she might be a model for Jaru. Basically, Jaru is a term used for natural beauty that includes one's own culture and clothing. After tiring out Ryuto on shopping, the couple finally sits down and has a drink. However, Runa gets the hint that Ryuto isn't enjoying this date pretty much, because she could see the fact that the boy wasn't paying attention to anything in the store. So Ari's boy then flatters Runa by saying that his eyes were completely on her this whole time. Therefore, he didn't get bored this whole time. He even compliments Runa that she looks cute when she's happy. And that makes him happy as well. Runa then begins to blush and calls Ryuto an unusual one. Meanwhile, Ryuto's feelings for Runa have increased even harder than when he was in her room. There, Runa receives a call from Nicole who asks her if things are going well. So Ryuto starts to wonder if she must have told Runa to not meet him or be careful. And that's why she called to check things up. Later, it freaks Ryuto out when Runa doesn't respond to his text message. Weird thoughts start to kick in Ryuto's mind that Runa must be ghosting him. Besides, Runa had plans for Sunday, so the boy gets curious about her plan because she usually has her phone with her and immediately responds to any notification. But now that Ryuto is texting her, she isn't responding, that's why you don't date hot girls, the overthinking starts to kick in. Ryuto then becomes so delusional that he starts to watch a streamer named KN stream and says that he's the only loyal person Ryuto has. The next day at school, Ryuto notices a bunch of popular boys reaching out to Runa and asking her to come and see her practice at the soccer club. It bothers Ryuto to see her talking with other guys while ignoring his text from last night. So his mates, Ren and Yusuke comfort Ryuto and tell him that it's okay, besides, that's what happens in the life of nerds like them. Wait, those two aren't even nerds, they don't score good grades. And later, as Ryuto enters home, he receives a text message from Runa asking him to come to the station right now. Well, Ryuto gets the hint that she must be calling him to break up, therefore the boy agrees to meet her and put an end to his fantasy. While he is walking towards the destination, Ryuto low-key regrets that he didn't lay Runa when he had the chance. Anyways, Ryuto then meets Runa and gets ready for the consequences. But weirdly, Runa starts to flex her new phone case in front of Ryuto. Runa then takes out another case and gives it to Ryuto. Since this case is quite rare and limited edition, the company was only handling one case at a time. Therefore, Runa had to ask Nicole to wait in line with her. Both the girls played games the whole night, hence their phones ran out of charging before the store opened. That's why she couldn't reply. At this point, Ryuto doesn't know what to say, the boy simply stands in silence and holds his gift tightly. Ryudo then reveals that he still can't believe that someone as cute as Runa picked him as a boyfriend. He was pretty sure that Runs would dump him in a second, but seeing Runa doing all of this for him brings the boy to tears as he thanks her. And so, the couple then wanders around with matching phone cases on their one-week anniversary. Ryudo then opens up to Runa and tells him that he once confessed to a girl in the past when he was in the first year of middle school. He used to sit right next to a girl named Kurose who one day hints to Ryuto that she might like sweet boys like him. And after such complicated hints, one day, Ryuto finally gathered the courage and confessed his feelings to her. However, the boy was rejected brutally and got friend-zoned by her. From that day on, Ryuto hasn't been confined to girls, though Runa tells him to look on the bright side, 
because if Ryudo was still dating her, then he'd never have asked Runa out. Besides, Ryudo believes that middle school love never lasts for long. Runa then reveals that her parents actually started dating in their first year of middle school too, and got married as soon as they graduated. Out of nowhere, a sports car passes by them, so Ryudo gets excited to see the car and begins to talk about the GR Super R's that crossed. The boy then carries on talking about the features of a sports car, which obviously goes straight above Runa's head. Luckily, Ryudo also notices how she just zoned out. Runa then resembles herself as a sports car, because according to her, she has been racing forward so she would be like her parents. But fastening things up never worked out for her, and neither did it for their parents who later ended up getting a divorce. Well, that took a dark turn. Besides, Runa thinks that she isn't as mature as she acts. So Ryuto then tells her that sports cars aren't just for traveling fast, it's a car that's fun to drive, just like Runa, not sure where this is leading. Basically, he means that Runa is always surrounded by friends and always has a boyfriend. So according to Ryuto, Runa is living the absolutely best life of her school years. And one way or another, Ryuto also loves sports cars. While that makes her day and so, they both race off to the station. Later that night, Nicole tells Runa that she doesn't need to try that harder if she thinks she and Ryuto are a bad match. However, Runa tells her that she's actually enjoying her time with Ryuto, therefore she plans to date him for a while. And for some unknown reason, Nicole doesn't seem to like Ryuto and warns Runa to not trust that guy one bit. And so the next day, this anime takes a new plot twist. The teacher then announces that they have a new student in this classroom. And as that student enters the class, Ryudo gets numb, because that girl is none other than Kurose Maria. We pick up right where we left off. The teacher just introduced Kurose to the call, and everyone is falling for her. Except, of course, MC. MC cannot forget what he felt after this girl rejected him three years ago, and doesn't want it to disturb his great relationship with Runa. No one can forget the feeling of rejection, my guy. Be strong. The teacher asks Kurose to introduce herself, and let the class know about her a little bit. She explained that she was out of town after middle school for three years, but moved back recently. The way she taught just put her right in the top of the school hierarchy, as they say. Kurose is too cute for everyone. The teacher wants her to sit somewhere nice and suggests a seat right by MC. MC freaks out seeing they are going to be neighbors again. Kurose takes her seat and notices MC. She cannot tell if this is the boy she was friends with three years ago so she asks MC if he is who she thinks he is. How much of a difference does three years make that she cannot even recognize him? MC says yes and avoids any further questions. MC knows that this is going to be very difficult from now on and he isn't going to let any of this get between him and Runa. After the class, all the students are praising Kurose for her cuteness and getting to know her when MC hears two boys talking about her. They are discussing whether Kurose is cuter than Runa. Hearing this, he knows him getting rejected by her is definitely going to be out, so he needs to stay away from her as much as he can. MC takes off and leaves the class but gets stopped by Nicole. Seeing Nicole all angry, MC freaks out and asks if she needs anything. Nicole wants him for something and takes him to a burger cafe nearby. Sitting there, Nicole is enjoying her fries while MC is just waiting for her to talk. He doesn't even have a clue what this is about but he knows it is going to be something bad for sure. MC asks what this is but Nicole says that she wants to eat her fries warm so he has to let her eat fries first, then they will talk. MC goes for a sip of drink but gets interrupted again by Nicole. She wonders if he knows about Runa's birthday coming up. Busted. Run my dude, he won't. This pisses off Nicole as she tells him that it is the coming Sunday. She is angry wondering if he's even serious with her or not. MC is but never catches her birthday. Nicole tells him that he is going to celebrate it. He agrees and Nicole is about to leave. She was here just to tell him that when Runa wasn't around. Nicole is leaving when Mick stops her to ask what are the things Runa likes. Nicole is confused as to why he can ask her himself, so why is he asking her? The thing is, MC was the one who got surprised last week, and this is his time to surprise Runa. She gave him this phone case without asking him about his hobbies and the things he likes, so he plans on doing the same. Nicole gets the feeling from this that maybe this guy really is serious about Runa and is going to do anything to make her happy. She agrees to help him and MC thanks her. They are chatting and discussing the things Runa likes when someone secretly takes their photo. The next day, MC is at the station heading to the school where Runa is waiting for him. This shocked him as he didn't expect to meet her there. 
Runa looks very happy, but is kind of confused when she shows MC her friend's group chat. It was Runa's friend that took the photo and sent it to the group chat saying that Nicole went out with this dorky guy. Runa wants to know what this is about. The girl is jealous Jude. Tell her the truth. MC knows he cannot get past this without telling her the real thing, so he asks if she's free this Sunday or not. This took her by surprise and MC is happy knowing that she is. MC wants to celebrate her birthday with her on Sunday. Telling that Nicole told him about her birthday, MC apologizes for not knowing it. Runa doesn't care about that stuff. The thought of someone caring enough that they want to celebrate your birthday is enough for her. The plan is done and Runa goes to school. MC is ready for this weekend as he is going to craft a perfect date for Runa's birthday. Sunday is here and Runa and MC are on their date in Harajuku. Yeah, that is someplace popular in their city. Don't ask me about it. Runa is happy out of her mind and MC is happy that Nicole told him this thing and it really worked. Nicole told him that Runa loves Harajuku and goes crazy whenever they go there. She also told him that she loves bubble tea and would drink a lot without knowing it. Now that MC knows this, MC takes her to a cafe and orders a bubble tea for her. Runa loves the tea and this makes MC very happy. MC went out on a limb and tried every bubble tea in the city. He tried a lot of them and started explaining how this one has a different flavor than some that he drank this week. Once again, he goes on a rant about this like a nerd which zones out Runa. Noticing that Runa is left wandering the time and space itself, MC freaks out cursing himself for doing that thing again. But Runa wonders if MC likes bubble tea this much. MC explained that he didn't like it that much but just wanted to know which ones were the best. That way he can take her to the perfect spot. This blows away Runa as someone who has never done this for her before. She never got someone who would take his time out of his routine to make sure she liked something. Runa feels loved and thinks they are on the right track. MC wants to take her someplace else for another bubble tea. This date kind of changes into a bubble tea date now that they are roaming around the town drinking different bubble teas. Runa is filled with all the bubble tea when they stop to get another one. MC didn't get one this time so seeing that, Runa offers him a sip of hers. MC is full to the neck right now, but doesn't want to refuse this indirect kiss. He takes the tea and takes a sip. Runa takes the tea back and tells him that they just kissed indirectly. MC cannot handle the rush of feelings right now. They are enjoying their moment when they see a couple right by them. The boy just gave her girl a ring or something. That made the girl really happy. Seeing them, MC wants to get Runa something too, but his wallet isn't going to let him. He only has a thousand yen remaining and asks if there is something she wants with that. But Runa takes the map MC made for her bubble tea hunting and wants to keep it as a souvenir. She again explains that no one has ever done this kind of thing for her so this is more than any fancy gift. It shows the love MC has for her. Runa is so happy to enjoy her 17th birthday like this. MC wanted to tell her about Kurosev but there wasn't any right time for that so that just didn't happen. Why does he want to tell her about Kurose again? He just told her about Kurose the other day. The next day in the locker room, MC is minding his own business when he hears several students talking and spreading weird rumors around about Runa. He has heard rumors about her before, but these are a little different. Like Runa never takes out her wallet on a date. This is why a boy never stays with her and things like that. It really concerns MC, and he cannot stop thinking about it. He is with his friends, but isn't eating anything because of this. Nicole shows up and Nishi and Ichi run away. Nicole tells MC that she heard about their date. MC wants to thank her for helping him with this, but this is not why Nicole is here. She wants to talk about the rumors spreading around the school about Runa. She is surprised that MC heard them too. This is really weird as they just started spreading and within a day, the whole school knows about them. This pisses off Nicole. She wants to find out who is doing this sick thing. A little later in the class, Kurose forgot her notebook at home so she shared it with MC. They are studying when the teacher goes to get her prints. Kurose takes MC's attention and wants to apologize for what she did in middle school. She wants him to know that she didn't know about dating and didn't understand anything. But now she does, implying that she is ready to give MC a chance. Man, this has got to be the worst timing. MC cannot believe what Kurose is saying and wants to know if she is serious or just playing with him. Either way, he cannot do anything because he is already in a relationship. Kurose is really surprised when MC tells her that he is in a relationship. Now she wants to know who it is he is dating. MC tried telling her, 
but he just doesn't want anyone to know about him dating her. He leaves the class and walks, thinking that it would be embarrassing for Runa if anyone got to know that she is dating him. To keep quiet about this is the best option. To his surprise, MC sees Runa going into an empty classroom with a boy. He goes to see and the boy is asking her to go out with him. Runa refuses, saying that she already has a boyfriend. The guy wants to know who it is but Runa won't tell him. The guy starts mocking that it is sure someone is a loser from the school. That is why she is embarrassed to tell anyone. Runa explains that she is just respecting his boyfriend's feelings. Otherwise, she has no issue in telling anyone in the world. She is starting to look like a perfect girlfriend. This shocks MC as he is thinking the opposite about her. Getting back to the class, MC sits on his chair. Kuro says starts talking about the rumors about Runa. She tells MC that her friend was an ex of hers and he told her that Runa is really a selfish person. She won't pay for anything on the dates. But this is the opposite of what MC experienced so this is getting under his skin. He figures out that she is the one who started the rumor. Kurose won't quit saying bad things about Runa prompts MC to get all angry and say that he knows she is wrong because he is her current boyfriend. Runa is nothing like the rumors say and she is a perfect girlfriend. The next moment we see our MC teaching his girlfriend Runa English. She is quite bad at this subject so she needed some help with it. MC is the best person to teach her this subject as he is the nerdy guy you go to when you need help with your studies. Runa is right now trying to make out sentences and what they mean. This sentence is something like, he is the last person to lie. Runa does not get what this sentence means at all. Seeing that she cannot even get the simple sentences, MC is a little concerned, but he is going to do his best to make sure she studies well and gets the best score she can get. He asks if she knows about the word lie, but she does not. She confuses it with her friend Ri, and that is not helping her clearly. So MC starts to explain the sentence. He starts by explaining what the word lie means. He tells her that lying means to be a dishonest person. When you tell a lie, it means that you are being dishonest. She still does not get it and MC has to use an example to make it out for her. He tells her that if all the people on the earth were liars, he would be the last person who was going to lie to you. Still, Runa is a little confused but MC tells her that it just basically means that he is an honest person. Runa now understands what this sentence means and tells him that this is him. He is the honest person he is talking about because if all the boyfriends in the world started cheating on their girlfriends, he would be the last to do so and she is sure about it. This touches his heart and he cannot think straight because of what Runa just said. Well that is one way to understand English. MC gets himself together and goes on to teach her some more sentences. Their exam for the subject is today, so she has to get everything by then. After a little while they are headed home when on the way, Runa strikes up a conversation and asks MC if he knows what is going to be this Saturday. He does not have a single clue what she is talking about, but he is trying too hard to think if he is forgetting something. He could not remember it but Runa helped him with it. She tells him that it is going to be one month one month of them dating and being in a relationship. This shocks MC. He could not believe that it had been one month already. He does not know how to react to this, but Runa doesn't need a reaction. She just wants to celebrate this happy occasion and for that, she suggests that they should go to the beach together and spend a night there. Hearing this blows a nice smooth breeze through MC's mind as he could not have thought of something better than this. He can imagine how beautiful Runa would look in the swimsuit and he cannot wait to witness that. He agrees and it is set. They are going to the beach for their one month anniversary. The next day, they get the result for their English exam and Runa cannot contain her happiness. She passed the exam and she feels like this is the best thing that could have happened to her. And this happened because of MC and no one else. MC does not want to take the credit and tells her that she also worked hard for it. He just helped her. Runa feels like this just made her one month anniversary even better and she is going to fully enjoy the day now. They are chatting like this for a while and we see Maria in the front seat in the class, just looking at them. This girl is surely regretting as to why she rejected this boy that time. Runa got just the passing marks and wants to know what MC scored. He got almost 90 marks and Runa cannot help but feel like that MC is a god. He is like a god among gods and he is really talented. After the class, MC is with his friends and they got scores that are just mediocre but they are happy that they have managed to score higher than before. Seeing them happy makes our MC happy. MC comes out of the class after a while when Maria stops him to ask something. She wants to know if he would be willing to help her in her studies as well. She wants to learn English very badly, 
and she knows that he is the best person to go to for this subject. MC tries to tell her that he just promised Runa for that and no one else but Maria does not listen. She keeps on saying that she would also need his help with mathematics as she is also very bad at that. She feels like she is not fully comfortable with the school so he would be a good tutor for him. MC hesitates to answer so Maria asks if after the vacation is alright with him. He does not want to help her study but he also cannot straight up say no to her. So MC goes out on a limb and tells her about his friend Ichi. He tells her that he is the best in mathematics and she should ask him to help her study. He wants to know if she wants him to introduce them both but Maria says no. She wants him to help her study and not someone else. She takes the chance and asks if she can get the Lime ID of him. At first she confuses that maybe she is asking for Ichi's Lime ID but he understands that. She is asking for his. He has no problem with that but he wants her to know that he is not going to be messaging her. Maria has no problem with that. We see Maria pull the phone out and bring it up to her chest in a position as she is taking a picture of MC secretly. What is this girl up to? If she wants to get together with him, she should know that he is not single. The day of the beach is here and our MC is walking to the station where he is going to meet Runa. There he is waiting for Runa when he gets a message from Maria saying that he should come to help her study on the 23rd. He lets her know that he is not free on that day as he has summer school. So Maria asks about when he is going to eat free so they can set a date on MC's wish. MC is about to respond when Runa arrives. MC looks at her and is blown away by how cute she looks. She is very excited to be spending this day with her boyfriend. She is ready to have the best one month anniversary she ever had. They reach the beach and going in, Runa is acting like a child. MC takes off his shirt and is kind of nervous looking at everyone, being so casual about this. He is waiting for Runa when she shows up in a cool and beautiful bikini that looks so good on her, MC should compliment her. She asks him about the suit she is wearing, but our MC is spacing out right now thinking how lucky he is to have a goddess as her girlfriend. He cannot believe that his girlfriend is so beautiful and is right now wearing a swimsuit that would make models look like regular people. He is zoned out in his thoughts when Runa brings him back asking him once again about her suit. He cannot answer the question and gets fully red. Runa laughs and giggles looking at him and how bright red his face has gotten. She knows that he is feeling lucky to be spending time with her bikini babe on this beach. She grabs his arm and they go to start their day on the beach. MC and Runa are under the umbrella when Runa asks if he can rub sunscreen on her back. Hearing this sends shivers down his spine but he has to agree and do as his girlfriend tells him to do. She lays on her stomach waiting for MC to rub the sunscreen on her back. MC takes the bottle and starts rubbing on the back. He is gently rubbing when Runa lets him know that he can also raise the strap to get the sunscreen under as well. He is hesitant but does as she tells him to do. He cannot believe that he is doing this all by himself and there is no one that is going to stop him. MC has gotten a new respect for the boyfriends that go on a beach date with their girlfriends like it is nothing. He is curious as to how they function after spending this much time. Anyways, MC is rubbing and he cannot stay focused. He is getting very worn out and has to use the distraction method to keep himself from losing it all. He starts multiplying 13 with all the numbers so he can stay distracted. After a nice sunscreen rubbing session, MC is sitting when Runa asks him to get in the water with her. She has a beach ball and they can play that and enjoy the time. They get in the water and they spend the time of their life, playing with each other, pranking each other and having a nice meal. They get their lunch from the food stall and after the meal, they are sitting and wondering how great their time in the water was. MC wonders how the weather is so nice when he hears that there is a typhoon coming. Out of nowhere, MC gathers his courage and tells Runa that the swimsuit she is wearing looks very good on her. About time my guy, does it take you this long to study as well? Hearing this makes Runa blush like crazy. She was not expecting this compliment from him right now, but she is glad that he liked it. She tells him the story of how she got it. She went to the store with Nicole and tried out like a thousand swimsuits. It got to the point where Nicole was very pissed off, but she got calm after knowing that she is doing this for her boyfriend. After coming back from the store, Nicole came and did the nails for her as well. They look pretty good and they go pretty well with the swimsuit she bought. MC cannot help but feel how great the time he spent with Runa was and he is looking forward to some more anniversary occasions. They chat happily when they notice that the weather suddenly is getting bad. After a while it started raining very heavily and there is no way they are going back today. They have to stay here as the trains for the way back are closed because of the typhoon. 
NC had to open up his mouth about the damn typhoon, now look what happened. They call at their homes to tell them that they are not going to be coming home today because of the weather. Runa and NC get off the call at the same time, so NC asks if Runa's father is okay with it. She tells him that she told her father that she is with a friend, so it is probably going to be alright with him. They find a good hotel nearby and go in to get a room for one night. Upon asking, they get to know that the cost of one room for the night is 6,000 yen, and if they make two rooms, it is going to cost them 5,000 yen each. So they are in a pickle right now and NC is thinking about whether they should take one or two rooms. He is in the middle of his decision when Runa tells him that she is fine with the one room thing. So if she is fine, NC is fine as well. They take the single room and upon going in, they see that the room is quite big and decent for the price they paid. NC goes in and she tells Runa that she should take the bath as he has already taken one. She should be cold so she should go in and get over with it right now. NC wishes, so Runa goes in to take the bath. Outside, NC is losing it right in the middle of the room, thinking about the situation he is in. He cannot believe that he is going to spend a night with Runa in the same room. He has to find out what she meant when she said that she is fine. NC is very curious as to what she meant by that. Is that she is fine because of it or she is fine for spending the night and getting over it? The guy is losing it over nothing. He is on the floor, freaking out over the fact that Runa is right now in the bath, and he is outside and there is no one else with them here. Maybe she is planning on doing it here right now or she is not. MC has to be ready for everything. With nothing in mind, MC starts doing sit-ups like crazy. He is doing the sit-ups when Runa comes out of the bath. Noticing him doing the sit-ups, Runa gets excited and wants to feel his stomach if he has a shredded one or not. She comes closer to him to check but MC does not let her. This sends a weird signal to her and Runa apologizes for doing what she did. But our MC still has no idea what she meant by this sorry she just did. He gets up and goes to take a bath now. In the bath, MC wonders about the sorry she did. He cannot put a finger on what that was. Was that sorry for making you uncomfortable, and was that sorry for leading you in because I don't want to do it tonight with you? This guy is a hell of an overthinker, how is he not depressed? After the bath, MC sits on the table with Runa. The news is that the weather is going to be fine tomorrow so they can get back home the next day. Runa is pretty happy about it, but what worries our MC is what he just noticed in the room. There are two sleeping beds, and they are right by each other. He knows what is up and what is going to go down tonight. Runa gives him some tea to drink and the time goes by so now they are about to go to sleep. They go to sleep and MC is in his bed while Runa is in hers. MC turns to look at Runa and she is staring at him. She cannot sleep and asks MC if he cannot either. Saying this, she asks if he wants to do it or not. So our MC was right. MC does not know how to respond to this and he just looks at Runa for a hot minute. Runa tells him that she is ready to do it with him. She was getting ready and was ready to do it when she felt like it. But she knows that she cannot just make him wait that long. NC is happy from the inside but also wants to know that Runa is totally on board with this. So if he asks if she is doing this for him or she actually wants to do it. Runa does like him a lot and wants to be closer to him all the time. Runa explains her feelings quite in detail here. She tells MC that the first time they were close to each other on the boat is actually the first time she actually wanted to kiss someone, so she kissed him and that was the best feeling for her. Like that, she knows that she is just going to like him more and more and she would want to feel him more closely as they get more deep into the relationship. This makes sense for MC and he understands. Runa feels like she is still not 100% ready, but she knows that she is quite there. Hearing this, MC knows that he cannot let her do this forcefully. So he tells her that they are going to be sleeping tonight and will do it when she is truly ready for him. This makes Runa's heart melt. She wonders why it is that he is so nice to him, but it is clear he likes her a lot. She has one selfish request to ask from NC though. She wants him to hold and hug her like for real. NC agrees and gets up. He holds her close and hugs her tightly. This is the first time they are hugging and the feeling is something. NC has not felt this way ever before. He cannot help but notice the sweet smell of Runa. He wants to hug her like this every time and never let her go but he has to. Runa goes to sleep holding hands with MC. We see Maria in her room, looking at the chat with MC. He still has not responded to the text she sent that day. She wonders why it is that she is not the one with MC. Why can't she be like Runa? The girl got some ideas and I don't like it. 
The next day, they are back and MC drops Runa off at her house. She leaves saying that they are going to spend the second month like they did the first, maybe even better. MC is ready for it as well. Heading home, MC is very sleepy because he didn't get a single minute of sleep last night. He kept looking at Runa in her sleep. On the way, Nickel finds MC going back home, but she wants to talk about something. She takes him into her work restaurant and asks him how the anniversary went. She is actually worried and tells MC that the second month for Runa is very heavy as she always gets dumped in the second month. She wants to know if MC is able to keep her and give her every kind of happiness. MC is up for it and promises that he will never let her down and will always be by her side. Nickel is happy and lets her go. On the way back, MC gets a call from Maria, but it is Runa on the other side. She wants him to come to school right now because of some emergency. MC goes to the school as everyone is leaving. Going to the sports room, he finds Runa in the dark, but we see that it is not Runa, but Maria disguised as Runa while Runa is at home. Luna called MC to come to the school in the evening for something important. MC arrives at the school and Luna guides him to the sports room, where it is just the two of them. They find themselves alone in a vacant room, with the entire school empty as if it were in the desert. How can they manage to do this without alerting security? Or is this allowed for the students in Japan? The air is absolutely tense, and Luna looks very serious when she tells MC that she wants to sleep with him. I mean, why would he even say no to her? He would be a fool to do so. All of a sudden, MC is unable to figure out what has gotten into her, as this is not her usual way of talking. He gets the feeling that she is forcing the point of having it with him. She wants to do it with MC, and by saying this, Luna clings on to MC instantly, hugging him tightly. MC gives up the urge to resist and hugs her back with a warm emotion from his heart, but something is wrong. He just doesn't feel right hugging Luna for some reason, and this is a matter of concern. The hug does not feel like it comes from Luna. It feels really strange. The feeling is quite concerning and MC cannot handle this anymore and decides to get away from what he is feeling. He pushes Luna away from himself and strangely stares at her with a piercing gaze. Oops, someone's disguise is about to fall off. After staring at her for a while, MC finds himself in absolute shock because he figured out something by his stare. He figures out that this person is not Luna. What? Talking to her didn't give him that. I would advise my girl Bestie to leave such a boyfriend. Luna looks at MC as if she lost. She obviously knows that there is no point in pretending anymore and tells him the truth. She is not Luna. In fact, Maria disguised herself as Luna to seduce and make MC do stuff with him. On God, I am clueless as to how, at this point, MC is controlling himself. This disgusts the hell out of MC. And he cannot believe that Maria is going this far to do it with him to get him. Maria assures him that she does not want him to make her his girlfriend, and if he wants, she can keep pretending to be Luna. Her obsession is so unreal that she absolutely misses the point of what he means, but this is not what MC is talking about or trying to explain to her. Maria explains that she doesn't want anything except to sleep with him. Just say you just want to get screwed by a nerd because there's just one reason girls go after nerds. She can give him her first time, pointing towards her virginity which Luna can't give him because she has already slept with her exes. This sentence was not what he needed right now. Suddenly, MC starts connecting the dots. He figures out everything that has happened recently around him and his girlfriend. Luna took Maria's cell phone because her battery died out and things were somehow similar to that. Maria then begins explaining that Luna and she sound the same, even though they are completely different in appearance. It is so visible, one got some massive honkers, while one looks like a 12-year-old boy Maria and Luna can sound more similar on the phone, and that is why he was not able to tell the difference. After Maria gives him the explanation, she tries to give MC a hug and convinces him to sleep with her, but MC is not going to. My dude might be desperate, but he is still loyal to his girlfriend. He knows that he literally cannot do anything to betray Luna, as she doesn't deserve this. Luna just deserves all the loyalty and love, and he knows he will give it to her, knowing where Maria is coming from. He still tries to comfort her. He adds that it is also not going to be fair to Maria if he does it. Taking her virginity, he had his first time with a virgin. Suddenly, the security guard begins hearing some noise coming from the room and goes to check on it. But in time, MC and Maria got away through the window and made their escape. They sit outside the school on the bench after escaping from the room. Then, Maria takes off the wig, which was her disguise as her sister. 
NC is just unable to believe the fact that she would go this far to take revenge on Luna. But this is not what NC thinks it is. He has gotten it completely wrong. NC cannot give any other reason but is surprised when Maria tells him that she likes him. Wow, how do the tables turn, eh? How do you feel now? She reveals that she likes MC and has not stopped feeling this way for a while now. Not only that, she has no way to stop that feeling and feels like she has to get him somehow. MC is startled. He cannot believe he is hearing these words out of her mouth, but it is true whether he believes it or not. But Maria further explains to him that she has been feeling this way about him since he confronted her for spreading rumors like that. That was the first time someone confronted her like that with an open heart. It just turned out to be very eye-opening for her and made her realize she was also worthy of love. Even right now, the way he told her off was not only to not betray Luna, but also to protect her. He did not disrespect Maria one bit, but he also continued to understand her point of view. She says that this is the reason she has fallen for him, and she can understand that she is never going to be his number one. Eight billion people, and she still wants to go for a taken guy. Maria is unable to stop crying like a child, and she tells him that she cannot stop feeling hurt. She wants him to accept her, but that is never going to happen in this life. Yeah, nobody picks a flat chest over huge melons. MC can't process the situation and does not know how to react to all of this. The situation is super hectic too. Your first love wants you back and is trying everything to do it. Maria then shares that she is feeling hurt right now. Now she completely understands how he felt at that time when she rejected him. Well, this is the first time she has fallen for someone too, and no wonder she got rejected. Saying this, Maria gets close to MC and holds his arm, keeping her head on his shoulder. She then says to him that she just wants to stay like this for a while, and she will go home without saying anything. He feels like he owes her this, and then MC lets her do this, and she does exactly as she said and goes home without a word. Following the very next day at school, MC stands in front of his locker and ponders what happened yesterday. Further, he thinks about how Maria went home without a word last night. The trail of his thoughts is unable to stop as he seems concerned about her. He doesn't know if he should hide it more, but maybe this is the time MC should tell Luna that Maria is the girl he proposed to in middle school and got rejected by her. But MC somehow hears everyone nearby talking about him for some reason. It looks like the tea got leaked. I can't wait to get some spilled on me too. He is unable to figure out what is happening and why he is suddenly the hot topic of the day. He makes his way to the class for his lessons, but is still baffled as to what happened. Then MC keeps his bag down on the desk and his friends, Iki and Nishi, come up to him, asking if he has lost his mind. MC is unable to understand what they are talking about and wants some sort of explanation from them. Well, the rumor turns out to be what he absolutely dreaded. The rumor is that MC is cheating on Luna with his sister Maria and was caught last night in school. Another way of saying my Rees is lower than a nerd's, not just that, they have some proof too. Saying this, his friends showed him the picture of him and Maria last night sitting on the bench, very close to each other. Gossip Girl Japanese version, I can't wait to enjoy it further. He jumps out of his pants as this freaks him out, and he tries to tell them that this is not what they think it is. Maria enters the classroom right then and sits on her chair, but everyone is looking at her. The pick me got picked. As the lesson ends, MC goes to Maria. NC calls Maria and asks her about the picture and if she knows who did this. His relationship and reputation are both pretty much sabotaged by that. Maria felt like she was being accused of this rumor and was held accountable. But Maria assures him that it is not her who did this and that she has no idea who took the picture. Then further, she says that she would never do such a low-life thing when she got rejected for the first time. Even after all this, her morals are high and she still has pride. Saying this, they get out of the class finally. And as expected, someone was waiting for them outside. Obviously, Luna and Nicole are standing right outside, waiting for an explanation. Luna looks at MC and asks him if Maria is the girl he proposed to in middle school. This is very bad. Just seeing it is making me sweat like hell. Well, what comes next is what usually happens after every cheating story. She says she feels really betrayed and starts crying with tears rolling down her cheeks. Luna further says that she cannot take this anymore and it is getting out of her hand. Saying this, Luna runs away crying, but Nicole is hell mad at MC for doing this. Luna never deserved this treatment in the first place. Luna looks like she could use a male best friend right now. 
She slaps him really hard and calls him a piece of crap before leaving as well. After creating a mess, Maria left as well, and MC is standing all alone now. The summer vacation is just around the corner too. On the other hand, the school is holding a closing ceremony for the school, but Luna is nowhere to be seen in the entire school. Even after the ceremony reached its end, Luna is still nowhere to be seen. She did not come to the class where MC was waiting for her to explain everything to her and fix everything again. After a while, the vacation started and MC started his sad and lonely vacation without his girlfriend Luna. Maria successfully managed to ruin things. All he could do was keep messaging her and somehow reaching out to her. But feeling betrayed, Luna never replied to him and didn't even read his messages. Enough to get on his nerves, but still, he wants to keep his feelings to himself. As all men should do, MC gets himself busy with his studies so he can be distracted from the loneliness and sadness. All he could think was that he wanted to apologize to her but felt like it was too late. He just needs another chance, and he will explain everything to the love of his life. On the other hand, Iki and Nishi are at the beach, excited to enjoy their day here. Another reason why single life is preferred by me. But there is nothing of interest to them, so they start watching Ken videos by the beach. They just sound absolutely gay to me, to God. Nishi gets a feeling like there must have been some reason for them to come here. But they brush it off. They try everything at the beach to have fun. But nothing excites them anymore, so they leave the effort. They get frustrated and they are about to leave. That is when they see something at one of the shops on the beach and freak out totally. This sudden seriousness is way too tense. Meanwhile, in the class, MC is studying to just ignore the heck out of his feelings when he gets a text and a photo from Nishi. Well, as expected, the picture is of Luna with some other dude, and Nishi tells him that his girlfriend is cheating on him. MC literally gets frustrated, and seeing this, he leaves the class and hurry and runs towards the beach in an instant. He takes the train, reaches the beach, and finds the shop right away. Girls, if he wanted to, he would. He knows that the shop is called Luna Marine, and she is there with this dude and her friend Nicole. Hurriedly, MC runs to the shop and sees Luna and Nicole taking pictures in their swimsuits, looking absolutely hot. Well, someone is about to get super jealous, as MC watches as Luna grabs this new guy by the arm. Closer to her, she tells Nicole to click a picture of her with this dude. The dude looks pretty chill, to be honest, and he tells her that it should be one as there is still some work for him to do. On the other hand, Nicole is about to click a picture of Luna with the dude. That is when the dude sees MC standing outside the shop, looking directly at them. He makes his way to MC and goes to ask if he was going in the water and wants something. But Luna and Nicole are left shocked to see him here all of a sudden. They wonder what he is doing here out of the blue. MC calls Luna and tells her that he wants to tell her something even though the time is gone. It's still not too late to fix everything. The guy feels the tension between them and figures out that MC is the boyfriend Luna was talking about. He feels like MC would be tired of coming all the way out here, so he should rest. Well, he turns out to be a nice guy. Then he remembers that he had forgotten the introduction part, so the guy takes out his business card and gives it to an MC. His name is Mao, and he turns out to be Luna's uncle, not her new boyfriend. Well, that was not what I was expecting. To release tension, he takes MC inside the shop, and Mao makes Luna and MC some lemonade while they are sitting outside. Nicole wants to know what he is going to talk about, and if she doesn't like that answer, she is going to give him some. Mao comes out, asks Nicole if she is free for some work, and gets her out of these two matters. The hyped up girl besties piss me off even more, making it hard for guys to manipulate. Then finally, MC gets the courage and tells Luna that Maria is the girl who rejected him in middle school. Something he should have told her before too, but it is never too late. But he explains to her more that. He wants her to know that he didn't want to keep it from her. The next thing he has to do is explain the meaning behind the photo. MC cannot get the words out even after coming all the way out here, so he gathers some more strength and tells Luna that what she saw was not what it seemed like. He further explains to Luna that Maria proposed to him that day, but he rejected her right away, telling her that he was with Luna and loved her with all his heart. But she started crying at the rejection, and that is when someone took the picture while he consoled Maria. He wants to apologize for making her worry for no reason, but Luna is not mad at all. Luna says that she completely understands what Maria was feeling and how much she might have gathered to propose to NC. She also understands that he was just being kind to her and nothing else, but someone took the opportunity to stir up some rumors about him. 
Then Luna begins thanking MC for taking care of Maria like that because she feels that Maria is her little sister. Well, to be honest, Maria is pretty sensitive, so she actually respects her for doing this. Well, that was even more unexpected. I would punch my boyfriend for breathing near a girl too. Luna explains that she was actually scared of asking MC about all of this and had no courage to ask him that. She feels like she has been very happy since they started dating and thought that there was no way MC would break her trust. So when all of this happened, she was actually scared to make sure if it was true or not, and she did not ask him. And about the messages, her phone broke. For that, she just sent it to get repaired so she could use it again. That is why she couldn't get back to his texts. But even before it was repaired, MC came himself to talk to her and explain everything to her by himself. They cannot contain their excitement as they are happily together now and everything is back to normal. Getting to Luna's grandmother's home, MC is forced to stay, so he has no other option left. Meanwhile, Luna has convinced MC to stay behind with her for the entire summer vacation. We see MC in a dream where he is on the shore, enjoying the nice view of the sun on a sunny day. He is living his best life and doing what he loves when suddenly, he starts hearing Runa's voice. This cannot get better for him as he feels like a sprinkle of Runa's voice on this happy occasion is no short of a heavenly experience. He starts to walk when he sees a flashing light coming from the sky and wakes up. Waking up, he sees Runa on top of her trying to wake him up. She wonders how long he is going to stay in bed, but all NC can think is how beautiful she is. He is more than excited to be living under the same roof as Runa. This is the first day of MC as a worker at Runa's uncle's shop. He gets ready to work there and helps Runa do her duties with her. This is such a heavenly experience for someone new to relationships, right? He gets to spend time with his girlfriend on a beach working together. Nice. They start the day and Runa is helping customers where MC is trying his best, but doesn't know the ins and outs of this place yet. A customer comes to him asking for a locker, but MC doesn't remember the prices. This is where Runa comes to the rescue and handles the customer quite easily. MC feels a little sad but happy at the same time that his girlfriend knows how to do the job. She starts teaching MC everything he is supposed to do here, and the day is going by greatly. This is very exciting for Runa as well because she hasn't spent this much time with his boyfriend in a long time. After learning and teaching for some time, MC is doing some chores around the shop when Runa suggests that he take his break to study for some time as his mother has sent his homework stuff to him. He agrees and gets to study. He is going at it and trying to finish the homework as fast as he can when he sees something weird. Two guys come into the shop and start flirting with Runa in front of him. He doesn't know how to respond but he sure knows that these lads are the popular ones and some obvious players. We can see clearly that even Runa is weirded out by these guys and wants them to go away but they aren't. MC is thinking of something but nothing comes to mind. He cannot find something while the guys are getting weirder. One of the guys starts asking if Runa is going to pick him or his friend. Runa obviously doesn't respond but the guys start arguing when the other person calls the first a chicken. The thing is that Mao went to get some supplies and these guys took the chance and came here to hit on Runa. MC has to do something so he gets up and walks up to them. He asks if they are looking for something from the shop and this leaves the guys a little surprised. They thought that MC was a customer enjoying the alone time, but he is a part-timer and they sure aren't going to hit on Runa in front of a part-timer. So they decide to leave and leave. They ask Runa if she is going to choose the part-timer or one of them. Runa sees the opportunity and grabs MC, telling them that she is going to choose the part-timer as he is already her boyfriend. This leaves MC happy and proud that Runa can talk about him so openly without any embarrassment. Anyways, Runa and MC sit together when Runa starts complaining about how these weirdos always come to talk to her. But seeing MC study, she starts telling MC that she is very impressed by him because of all his studying. He is always studying even on the beach, and he is going to get admission to a great college for sure. This is a little out there for MC, but he thinks he still has a long way to go for that. Runa explains how everyone has their futures planned out. Like Nicole, for example, she is going to become new Christ, and she is already working very hard to save money for the tuition because her mother is a single parent. So she is working here and there to get as much money as she can. And Akira also wants to become a fashion model so she is working hard for that. MC wonders if Runa has any plans after the graduation but she doesn't. She feels like she already has achieved her goal for college and that is to develop mutual feelings with someone she thinks of staying with forever. She has some nice lines. This leaves MC blushing. 
She adds that she always wanted to live with mom, dad, and Rhea again someday, but if that doesn't work out, she surely wants to build her own family. She wants to have a home with a lot of kids and a husband she is truly in love with. She truly is a pure person. Suddenly, Runa feels like she is going too overboard with this stuff and apologizes to MC but MC doesn't mind. He sure does know that Runa has spent a lot of time thinking about her future with him than he thought about his with her. This is not okay for him and he feels like he should study even harder for the college exams. Backslash a little later, MC is taking a shower, thinking about how Runa has thought about the future with him and how truly in love she is with him. Whereas he hasn't even thought about the tomorrow with her. He is wondering this when suddenly, he hears Runa worried outside for some reason. She asks her grandma about potatoes, but she tells her that they are out of them because she made croquette two days ago. This messes with Runa as she wants to make something for MC. Grandma asks what she is trying to make when she tells him that she wants to make meat and potatoes for MC. MC is listening to everything she is saying standing behind when Runa turns to see him. Her surprise is ruined but still, she tells MC that she wants to make meat and potatoes for him. She is about to go and get some when MC joins her. They are on their way to the market and reaching the market, they find potatoes. After finding them, they buy some and begin their journey back. On the way back, MC is holding the groceries when Runa sees that and asks if she can carry one. The bags are light so it is not a problem for him, but Runa expresses that they cannot hold hands if he is carrying both bags. So Runa takes on and they hold hands, walking in love. This anime is so romantic. Yes, something you guys will never experience. They get home and Runa starts to make potatoes and meat. MC wants to help out so he asks if he can help with something. Runa gives him some carrots to chop but MC hasn't had a lot of training to cook so he is finding it difficult. But he manages to chop some when Runa shares how they are now cooking together. They look like a married couple to her and hearing this shocks MC once again. The cooking is finished and the meat and potatoes are ready. MC gets a taste of them when Runa tells him to and it is great. Seeing MC's reaction, Runa feels wonderful inside and shares that this is the first time she thinks that dating someone can be this great. However, back at home, Maria comes back from the library and her mom asks if the library is crowded or not. She took her time to come back so she is a little concerned. Mom starts wondering if Maria wants to go to grandma on the beach this year as well, and she doesn't have a problem. Mom wants to time it this year with the summer festival. She explains that the grandma told her that Runa is also there and a classmate of hers is also living there. Hearing this, Maria is left speechless, and she doesn't have anything to say. She was looking forward to the festival, but now she doesn't want to go. She makes an excuse right on the spot that she has to see a friend from the school that week so she cannot go. Saying this, Maria comes to her room and locks herself all sad. At the beach, Runa and MC get the news of Maria and Mom not coming this year because of Maria's plans. This leaves Runa wondering if this is because of her, and if Maria is avoiding them. Runa and MC are washing the dishes when Runa explains how Maria left home for two years. And when she came back as a transfer student she didn't even recognize her. She thought she would never come back but she did. She adds that Mom and Dad got a divorce and after that, they started living alone. She knows that Maria doesn't like to be in the same school as her but she can't do anything about it. She knows that Maria doesn't want to talk to her and that is the reason she only told Nicole about Maria being her sister. She always thought that Maria was a good person but talking to her has always been very difficult for her. From the very start, she and she had different personalities but still she knows that Maria is a beautiful person from the heart. She wants to get along with her and share ice cream with her like old times but that is impossible. Suddenly, Runa gets an idea and shares it with MC. She asks if MC can become Maria's friend. Because that way, she cannot be direct with her and the chances of Maria accepting Runa are much higher. If she tried to talk to her directly, she would never accept her. MC is a little confused but Runa explains everything. MC has to do this for Runa and MC cannot deny that for sure. Runa decides that she is going to become Maria's friend first and maybe next winter. She can be direct with her and then they can get along like old times. This makes Runa very excited and she calls this plan the friendship mission. Maybe you should talk to MC before naming missions. Mao comes back and with him, he has brought Runa's phone that came back after being repaired. Runa is excited to get back to social media and talk to her friends. She feels like it is going to be hard to catch up to the trends and MC thinks that he cannot catch up to them ever. 
MC watches Runa as she goes through the trends on her phone, thinking how beautiful she is. Runa is ready to make a video for the trend and wants MC to join her in it. They make the video and Runa is very happy. That was very cringy to be honest but then again, kind of romantic as well. The next day, MC is working in the shop when Mao comes to him and tells him that it has been two weeks of him working here, saying this, he gives him an envelope. It is his salary but MC cannot believe it. He doesn't accept it saying that Mao lets him live free in their house but Mao is a good person. He explains that because of him, he was able to do a lot of other things and write as he is also a writer. MC accepts the salary when Mao suggests he get Runa something tonight as today is their two month anniversary. How the hell did he know that? Now MC is off to find something good for Runa and in the market, he stumbles upon something. After getting it, he gets back home and suddenly he gets a call from Runa asking where he is. He tells her that he just got home, but Runa doesn't want him to open the door right now. After a hot minute, she tells him to open the door and sees Runa and Yukata looking all cute. She asks how she looks to which MC responds stuttering almost. Runa teases him saying that he had a giant reaction to the swimsuit which makes him a pair. She is making fun of poor MC's innocence. Now she wants MC to get dressed in a yukata as well so they can go enjoy the festival. At the festival they are catching some fish but MC cannot catch some. He tries one more time and Runa is rooting for him. After that, they play the ring a loop but MC is bad at that as well. They are enjoying the festival to the fullest and making every memory as they go. MC asks if Runa is hurting at her feet or not in yukata but she is fine. They are waiting in line for something when Runa sees something and asks MC to keep the line for her. She goes to this ring shop and looks for the ring with a moonstone. But all are sold out and this makes Runa a little sad. She goes back and they continue what they were doing. After doing everything at the festival, they are walking back with Runa eating candied apples when MC asks again if her feet hurt or not. She is fine but the thing is, this is MC's first time walking with someone in a yukata so he is a little concerned. MC shares that he always thought that the candied apple was hard to eat, but now that he has tried it, he finds it delicious. He also did a lot of things for the first time today with Runa. He is sharing everything with a happy thought, but for some reason, this is all making Runa a little sad. She stops and MC turns to look at her. She looks pretty sad when Runa explains how she is happy that MC has had a lot of first experiences with her, and that makes her very happy. But the thing that makes her sad is that this is not her first time. She has done the same thing a lot of times before, and that is not okay. She wants this to be her first time with him as well, but it cannot be. She shares that she always thought of marrying the guy she met the first time, but that couldn't happen with her. Saying this, Runa starts crying, and this makes MC very concerned. But he explains, This is her first time as she has never shared these feelings with someone before. Whenever they did something, like have bubble tea, the boat and everything. She did it with him, and that is enough to make him happy, so she doesn't have to be worried about anything. As he tells her that, he takes out something from his pocket and it is a ring of some sort. Runa takes a look at it, and it is the moonstone she wanted back in the festival. MC wants to give this present to her on the occasion of their two-month anniversary. He knows that this is not enough for what she has done in return, but this is from the bottom of his heart. Runa stops him from saying that and tells him that this is more than enough and she loves it. He wanted to get something like her birthstone but this made him think about her. She wears the ring and it looks very beautiful on her hands. MC wants Runa to know that he plans on doing a lot of different things together so they have a lot of new experiences together. Runa agrees and wants to try a ton of different things. Runa raises her hand to see how beautiful the ring is when the fireworks start exploding in the sky all of a sudden. They both got the VIP seats for this and the view is amazing. Runa gets closer to MC and holds his arm, asking if she can do this till the fireworks end. She can do that and Runa shares that the urge to be closer to someone develops when you actually like them. She likes MC and knows that one day she will want to do it with him. That would make him happy for sure. This makes MC feel a little surprised. He turns to Runa and tells her that he likes her very much. Runa has the same feelings for him as well, and they share this great moment with each other. Man, these kinds of natural moments are very romantic for me. Why cannot this happen in real life? Now I am sad and single. They look at each other and know that they are going to give in. So MC gathers his courage, gets closer to Runa, and goes in to kiss her. She does the same and they kiss for the first time, and as they do it, 
a huge firework explosion happens which makes the moment even more beautiful. What a perfect way to end the day, right? Talking to her friends, Akari and Nikoru, Luna says that she completely forgot about the seat change and sat in her previous seat. Jokingly, Akari says to Nikoru that she is jealous of her, as her new seat is almost as close as the old seat. Akari says sarcastically that it is her luck and shouldn't be belittled. Luna notices her sister, Maria, sitting alone, so she goes to her, but as soon as Luna goes near Maria, she runs away. Meanwhile, Ryudo entering the classroom notices this and wonders that Luna and Maria are struggling to make their mission of being friends successful. Later on, Ryudo tells his friends about it, to which they taunt him, sounding like heartbroken virgins because their friend got a hot girlfriend. Ichi and Nishi say that, like every summer, they will be spending their summer watching game streams and nothing else. Because that is how introverts spend their summers, Nishu taunts Ryoju, making a jealous face. But being their savior friend, Ryudo asks what Ichi and Nishi are doing the upcoming Saturday and if they have any plans. Ichi and Nishi, both confused, asking why, to which Ryoda replied that he was thinking of doing something new, playing airsoft with Luna. Now it starts falling into the right places. Ryoda wants Ichi and Nishi to play airsoft with Akari and Nikoru while he plays with Luna. I always needed a friend like Ryotu to hook someone up with me. Well, the virgins are having their luck being good. On Saturday, as the boys are preparing to start the airsoft game, the girls show up with incredibly hot outfits. Luna, Akari, and Nikoru start taking pictures while Ichi, Nishi, and Ryotu watch them, and Ichi says they smell good. Well, virgins do pass the creepiest remarks, that is for sure. Ryota wonders what the girls are talking about, while the girls were literally just talking about how slay the pictures were. But he approaches Luna and says to cover up her front of the dress as her honkers look bouncy. Obviously, he had to show his dominance in an unattractive way as a man. Covering up, Ryu says it is unsafe to show your skin during the game. Then suddenly, Akari goes to Nishi and says to him that he was in the same grade as her last year. Further, she asks him what grade he is in. Having had no female interaction before in his life, Nishi falls into Ichi's arms, saying that it is amazing to hear a girl call his name twice. Ichi says he understands it, since he is the same as Nishi. A geek with no female interaction, Nikoru comes up and says they look low-spirited today. They both exclaim as Nikoru comes near them and calls her the devil girl. Nikoru says she has heard that they both are good at these kinds of games, so she is going to count on them. Being their first female interaction, they swore to Nikoru that she was the best and that they would protect her from the deadly bullets. That is some fan base. On the other hand, Luna flirts with Ryotu that she will make a critical hit today. But with her action at Ryotu's heart, she points the gun at him. At first, Ryotu blushes and then says that they have been told not to point guns at each other. Watching him have a cute moment, Ichi and Nishi get jealous, and Nikoru says she is not enough for them from the back. Ryota wonders if it is going to be a tough day, looking at his friends' silly actions and their nerdy behavior. Now the game starts. The airsoft game begins with a good beginning. They all begin by hitting each other in every way possible. Being Luna's guardian, Ryota saves her and tells her to stay behind him so he can protect her. Well, Ichi's fat jealous ass tries to perish them but gets attacked by Akari from the back and he gets a hit. But seeing Akari getting hit by Nishi, Luna runs to her, standing in the open. I mean Luna would understand a kitchen simulator better. Trying to defend Luna and Akari, Ryoju tells him to hide and faces the devil girl, Nikoru, who begins hitting him. Eventually, Ryotu and Akari get hit too. It is just Luna and Nikoru left. With a lot of spirit, Luna says she won't lose, at least for Ryotu she can't. Then an intense match between the two of them starts with hitting and dodging the bullets. But after some time, Nikoru gets hit by Luna and loses, and Luna wins the airsoft game. Later on, after the game, Ichi and Nishi think about how they could lose against some normies. It is always the guys with no life calling others normies. Then Luna approaches Ryotu and apologizes that he got hit protecting her. Ryotu says it would have been cooler if he had retaliated, but Luna says he was already pretty cool back there. Meanwhile, Nikoru cuts down her nails and says that they were getting in the way of her trigger. She pulls up the gun again and calls for another match, where she totally fries everyone. After the match ends, they begin leaving after having a great time. Luna seems troubled, and the reason for it was that she could not find her earrings. Her friends ask her what is wrong, and she says she cannot find her moon and star earnings, which she is always wearing. It seems precious to Luna, 
to which Nikor says don't wear it to school or else they will confiscate it. After looking in her bag properly, Luna finds it and wears it. Ryoda wonders that even if he is not a big fan of fashion, he knows that Luna cares about this earring too much. So why is it only one earring and not a pair? A while later, they all go somewhere to eat, where Ikshi and Nishi tell Ryodu that the devil girl is no match for them and her skills are godly and amazing. The girls walk over to them with their drinks in their hands and sit down with them. As they sit down, Akari says that it was fun playing the airsoft as different airsoft guns make bullets fly differently. Genuinely, it seems fun for her to get more stuff like that for herself, Akari adds. Getting excited, Ikki says that one airsoft gun is the gateway to the airsoft world and that it is a great hobby. And oh boy, with that said, Ikki begins talking non-stop about his love for the airsoft world. Ryofu thought he was going to creep out of Akari, but Akari seems to enjoy all of that stuff, which comes as a shock. But Akari says she is too broke to get another hobby. Nikoru says she looks quite like an otaku, just like Nikoru. Ikki and Nishi ask what she does, to which Akari says that she is obsessed with Vanilla Voice and begins babbling about it. Ikki and Akari would make quite a couple. Then Nikoru says she is a nail art otaku, and she is madly obsessed with many nail arts and prints, and then it was her turn to babble about it. The boys literally have no idea what they both talked about. Well, Luna says that she is glad that her friends have a great thing to obsess over. To which Nikoru teases Luna that she has an obsession too, pointing towards Ryotu. Luna blushes at it, and Nikoru thanks her for the amazing day today. Then, Nishi asks Ryotu in his ear if Nikoru has a boyfriend. But Nikoru already starts saying that she can't think of dating again because of her ex-boyfriend. She adds that he was an incredibly cool guy, not just for his looks, but also for his way of life. He always had his headphones on and would always be listening to Buddhist sutras, which Nishi says sounds really edgy. Well, Nikoru gets angry at that and says he does sound ridiculous, but even she could not forget about him. Although they just dated for two weeks in middle school, oops, it looks like someone hasn't moved on. Nikoru says that he was the only guy she liked, and after that she never really liked anyone else. But Nishi focuses on something else and says that since Nikoru just dated for two weeks, it is clear she is still a virgin. Before Nishi even completes his statement, Nikoru steps on just his feet, making him scream like a girl would. I wonder what she could do if she stepped on me. Nishi exclaims that whatever comes from the devil girl, he will gladly accept it. Submissive men have got to be my favorite gender. On the other hand, Akari says that if she were to date someone, she would prefer someone tall. Seeing his chance, Ikki asks how tall she wants with a sparkle in his eyes of hope. Akari says since she is short, anyone taller than her would work. Then she asks Ikki how tall he is, and he says he is 181 centimeters with his eyes still sparkling. The same height as Akari's celebrity crush, and she is so happy to know that. Well, Ikki looks excited out of hope too. Fellas, good news, y'all can get laid someday too. Ryotu understands Ikki's happiness and him being excited. Well, that's because Ryotu was in Ikki's place a while ago too. Later on, they all leave for their work and homes, bidding farewell to each other except Ryotu and Luna. Then Ryotu turns to Luna and asks what her plans are, and she says she would prefer it hang out with Ryotu. Luna suggests that since they both are here, they should go on a date, and there's a place she wants to go. Her eyes are literally sparkling with joy. Then Luna takes Ryotu to an amusement park, sits with him on a ferris wheel, and giggles because she seems really happy. Being excited, she says she always wanted to ride a ferris wheel with Ryotu. Meanwhile, Ryotu wonders if it is a private space just for the two of them, and he wants to kiss her. His mind keeps telling him to kiss her, but he is really shy about making the first move. Then Luna turns to him and says she has read a manga that belonged to her mom, and she read it really long ago. The main characters of the manga were a girl and her boyfriend, who ate marble chocolate and kissed inside a ferris wheel. But now she wants to recreate that with her boyfriend. Being dumb, Ryo says it is prohibited to eat inside the ferris wheel. Luna giggles and says she doesn't have chocolate anyway, then gets up and sits near him. Looking into her eyes, Ryota comes near her too, and they share an intimate kiss. After the kiss, Luna asks what the taste of her lips was like, and Ryota says it was like a peach. And bingo, it actually was right since Luna applied a lip tint with a taste of peach. This called me single in 100 different languages. 
Then Luna keeps her head down on Ryobu's shoulder and says she really likes him a lot. With an unusual demand, Luna tells Ryoto to pat her head. Ryoto asks why in confusion and she answers that she wants him to tell her after the game that she did a good job. So now Luna wants him to pat her head and Ryoto, being a good boyfriend, pats her head and Luna's eyes shine with happiness and satisfaction. Later on, they get off the Ferris wheel and begin walking home, holding each other's hands. Luna thanks Ryota for spending such a great time with her and inviting her to the airsoft game. Then she stops walking and Ryotu asks what the matter is. Luna replies that it is soon going to be three months since they started dating, and their third month anniversary is coming soon. She feels happy over that, and she is overwhelmed over experiencing their first time together. Ryota happily asks that their third month anniversary is coming on a weekday and if she wants to do something special for it. Luna replies that she does not want anything special because every moment she spends with the love of her life is special to her. Well cliché. Every day of her life is beautiful because of him, and she gives him a side hug. Then Luna suggests they leave the idea of their anniversaries, and she wants to spend her entire life with him happily ever after. Ryota happily agrees with whatever she says. Further, Luna adds that for the first time in her life, she feels like she is in love. After saying that, Luna gets shy and begins running away. Ryota runs after her happily to catch up with her, and he thinks that he wants to catch up with her all her life, wherever she runs. The train tracks look sexy as hell right now to sleep on. Ryota keeps thinking about how beautiful she is and how she is thinking about their future together. For someone like that, Ryota wants to become a man worthy of her. And for that, the only thing he can do is study as hard as he can to give her a brilliant future. After that, he wants to finally leave being a virgin. As he is studying, the door opens to the library, and Ryoju turns around to see Maria. He immediately hides from her, as if he saw a ghost. Seeing Ryoju's seat empty, Maria and her friends come to sit on his seat, and he now has to sneak from under the tables. His head bumps from the table, and he loudly says ouch, which Maria kind of recognizes, but brushes off. Finally, Ryoju makes his way to the door, and he gets stopped by a hand as he is leaving. It was a friend of Ryotu, Sakia, who is also a repeater and absolutely hot, who said, sorry, got off topic, and said he hasn't seen Ryotu in ages. They both sit in a cafe, and Sakia shows his card to Ryotu, which says he is a high school graduate and a repeater. Ryotu asks why, to which Sakia says he helped him because he was standing out too much. Then Sakia asks what is the deal with that girl, whether she is a stalker or an ex-girlfriend. Ryotu exclaims, and Sakia says repeaters are dying for new stories, so he needs to spill some tea. So knowing the fact that Sakia helped Ryotu in a tight spot, he decided to tell Sakia everything, the entire truth. After hearing Ryotu's story while gulping down his drink, Sakia is amazed. Out of everything, his current girlfriend turned out to be the sister of his first love. But what does Ryotu plan to do? Sakia asks, since he can't keep running away from it. Well, unrealistically, Ryota says he does not want to keep giving Maria anxiety, but she ended up being in the same prep school. Sakia agrees that he understands his point of view, looking down with his arms folded, making me think all the wrong things. But anyway, back to the point, Sakia says he will help Ryochu out as he is daily in the library, and he will tell him whenever he sees Maria and inform Ryochu where she is. Then, Sakia advises Ryochu to focus on his prep school since being a repeater sucks really bad. After that, they exchange their numbers to stay in contact. The next day in school, the teacher announces the cultural festival, and a committee has to be set up. Along with that, a sports festival will be going on too, so whoever wants to participate has to raise their hands. Nobody raises their hands, as everyone is busy with their own things. The teacher tells them that it is going to be fun, of course. Out of nowhere, Maria stands up and says that she will do it. The entire class turns to look at her. The teacher asks again if anyone else wants to participate, to which Luna raises her hand, saying that she wants to participate alongside Maria. It comes as a shock to Maria and Ryotu. They both look amazed. Ryotu wonders if maybe now the mission to be friends with her own sister is in action. We see the teacher calling on several students. She is busy trying to pick members for the upcoming sports festival. Of course, Runa instantly volunteers to be among the people. All the eyes turn to her as people decide if they want to volunteer or not. Then, Kurose volunteers to be part of the committee. They ask Nikoru Yamana if she would like to be part of the team, but she declines. She says that she has a part-time job and does not have the time. Runa has other plans in mind. 
She looks around the classroom and sets her eyes on Ryudo. Ryudo unwillingly stands up and says that he volunteers. This makes Runa very happy. However, Ryudo was not going down alone. Since Akuri had also volunteered, he tries to help his friend Yusuke out. He says that Yusuke would also be interested. He stands up and is embarrassed when he sees Akuri looking at him. Ryudo thinks that Yusuke will thank him later. The choice between horniness and comfort is a tough one. And so, the teams for the sports festival committee are finalized. Akari and Yusuke are part of the decoration committee while Runa, Hirose, and Ryudo are part of the pamphlet committee. The three of them sit in silence as they have their first meeting. This is because Kurose is a new stranger to them. Ryudo searches for ways to break the ice so they can get started. Runa immediately starts talking with a big smile on her face like she usually does. Kurose is way more quiet. They started deciding on the type of pamphlet they were going to design. There is a small pile of old pamphlets on the desk between them. They brought these out to serve as references for when they start designing. Ryudo is still lost in thought when Runa starts talking. She addresses Kurose politely and asks her how to proceed. They want something that truly pops out and leaves everyone stunned. Kurose does not have much knowledge on the topic and relies on the research. Runa decides to ask her what hobbies she has. This question comes as a surprise to Kurose. Runa's logic was that the pamphlets could have a signature edition of the designing members. Kurose answers that she was a fan of watching videos. Runa's eyes light up when she hears this. She suddenly starts talking about music videos and idols. She names a bunch of them and asks Kurose if she had seen them. She was truly a fan of idols and music. However, Kurose seems super confused by all this. She even asks Runa what language she was speaking. Ryudo decides to break the ice and clarify. He asks Kurose what type of videos she liked to watch. She said that she was into gaming commentary videos. Now it was Ryudo's turn to get hyped and excited. He asked if she was familiar with Ken, and Kurose said yes. They go on to start talking about games. Kurose says that one of the games Ryudo mentioned was childish. Ryudo becomes defensive and says that it was not true. The gamer simply comments on the game and it was an entertaining pastime. Runa looks at them with a blank expression. She was busy wondering what language they were speaking. It seems like the ice had been broken, and they could move on with their work. At the next meeting, Runa brings out a bunch of pink and sparkly pamphlets. She says that she wants the sports festival pamphlets to look like that. Kurose had different opinions. She had picked out designs that were neutral and looked good. Her explanation was that the target was both men and women. Therefore, they should not go for something super glamorous and extravagant. Runa is not happy about this. Ryudo secretly agrees with Kurose, but does not want to piss his girlfriend off. Kurose turns to him and asks him about his opinion. He decides to deflect the question so Runa would not get angry at him. It seems like another day had gone by as a loss. He heads to a ramen shop where he meets an old friend. He decides to sit with the old friend and talk about his situation. It seems like the dude was quite handsome and popular with the girls. Ryudo asks him for advice regarding his situation. The friend tells him that he had dabbled with girls in high school, which is why he was now retaking his exams and failing. He goes to show a picture of him winning the table tennis championship some years ago. He says that he was not always this cool. A girl had come along and asked him to grow his hair out, and it had changed his life forever. Ryudo says that he better not have cheated on the girl, since there was still no progress with the pamphlet. Ryudo visits his school's office. He consults a teacher about the slow pacing. The teacher simply tells him that he could take some more time, but he would need to come up with a solution. On his way home, he nearly zones out and misses his stop. He hurriedly steps out of the train as the doors are closing. What a coincidence, he thinks. This was because he met Kurose there. They both awkwardly stand side to side before Kurose eventually starts talking. She talks about how her house was close by. Her mother had gotten divorced for the second time, and they had decided to move and live here. She had chosen this school because it was a private school but still quite affordable. Before her mother got divorced, her stepfather was paying for her tuition. Now she had a new father and a new last name. This always happened to her, and it was exhausting. That was part of the reason she was jealous and intimidated by Runa. She had everything together and was popular. Meanwhile. Kurose always had to be walking on eggshells to maintain her reputation and not make mistakes. Ryudo finds this all quite touching. It is here that Ryudo finds out that Runa and Kurose are sisters. They share the same mother but do not live together. 
is the reason why Kurose is so hostile and closed off towards Runa. They are both sisters but they do not get along well together. This comes as a shock to Ryudo. Kurose confesses that all she truly wants is to get along well with Runa. She is her sister and is too old to be holding grudges. She lets it be known that she only wants the best for her and does not want to continue their petty feud any longer. This is a huge relief to Ryudo who only wants the two of them to be friends. Because if that happened, then they would both simply cherish Runa and matters would be resolved. Ryudo is lost in thought and almost misses the train once more. If Kurose had not called for him, then he would have surely missed it. The two of them talk some more along the way. Kurose went to a prep school after classes and studied hard. Ryudo is astonished at the late time and asks if Kurose wanted to be escorted home. She simply replied that she would not. That was because Ryudo was not her boyfriend. This makes Ryudo quite literally fall over. All he has to say in return is that someone bumped into him and made him fall over. Kurose helps him pick up some of his books. She grabs a blue textbook and asks if he went to Cape Prep School. Ryudo says that he did. She simply smiles and says that she already knew. With that, she runs off saying that they would meet each other at school. After she was gone, she is angry at herself for not keeping a respectable distance and calls herself an idiot for it. That night, Runet is bombarding Ryudo with texts. She is going on about how her sister does not like her. She is hostile towards her and her plans of being friends were not working. Ryudo knows the full story so he smiles to himself in his room. He simply tells his girlfriend to give it some time and things would turn out to be better. That seems to calm Runa down who texts him a happy goodbye. Now it is time for the long-awaited sports festival at Saren School. Ryuto reflects on how it was an event for extroverts and for extroverts. The old Ryuto would have never imagined taking part in such a big event. How the times had changed, he reminds himself of the positive impact his girlfriend had on him. He is deeply grateful for her and decides to cheer for her even more enthusiastically. And so the events finally begin. The very first major event is the relay race. Runa is running in the relay race and Ryudo is cheering really loudly for her. The atmosphere is lively and cheerful and everyone is busy having the time of their lives. There comes a point when Runa and another girl are head to head in the race and chances of her winning look slim. Ryudo loudly cheers for her and that gives her the strength to keep going. She ends up winning that race. She looks amazing and everyone is jealous of Ryudo and Runa. The two of them sit together on a picnic mat and feed each other octopus sausages. All of Rito's friends are jealous of the lovable couple. There are more events taking place and everyone is busy enjoying themselves. It seems as if things are working out smoothly. Then Runa takes part in a sort of obstacle race. The goal was to race to the table where there were envelopes set. Then you had to open the envelope, do a mini scavenger hunt, and then finish the rest of the race. Runa is the first to get to the table and suddenly calls to Ryudo from the stands. Ryudo is shocked but Akari pushes him to hurry up and get there. Runa grabs his hand and the two of them hurriedly race to the finish line. They end up winning. Runa thanks her boyfriend for being amazing and for cheering for her even during the early races. He is shocked and embarrassed that she heard all of his wild cheering. He then asks her why he had to come down from the stands. In response to that, she shows him the envelope and the piece of paper inside. The paper said that you had to get someone you liked and finish the race with them. This makes Ryudo blush as he thinks about what a sweetheart his girlfriend was. We see Kurose and Akari in a vacant classroom and they are both trying on cheerleading outfits. The two of them look adorable with the bows in their hair and their short and revealing outfits. Kurose seems a bit embarrassed and blushes as Akari compliments her. It seems that she had not been able to make a decision regarding the activities she would be taking part in. In the end, she had to settle for cheerleading. Akari lifts her spirits up and tells her that the two of them would have a blast. Cheerleading was super fun. The two of them grab their yellow pom-poms that look like marigold flowers. They start to head down towards the school grounds where the sports festival was taking place. Kurose tells Akari that her mother was coming to watch her and cheer for her. She had invited her mother herself to come see her daughter doing activities and cheering for the school teams. She gets embarrassed and tells Akari how weird it was for someone to call their mother in high school to come watch them cheer. Akari boosts her spirits once again and tells her that it was not weird at all. Akari loved her mother too and did things like that with her all of the time. This makes Kurosta happy. However, her happiness is short-lived. She approaches the school grounds and sees her mother patting Runa on the head. This instills panic inside her and she starts to back away. 
She does not meet her mother. Akari is confused. Kurosi offers her no explanation and says that she would be back in time for the cheerleading. This was probably why her dad left to buy milk and never returned. She then runs off and heads to the school roof to hide. She has a depressed expression on her face. Runa and Ryujo become worried when Akari tells them what had happened. They both head into the school building to look for Kurose. They split up so that they can cover more ground in a short amount of time. Ryudo is the first one who heads to the school roof. He looks around and eventually finds Kurose there. He calls out to her, but she is still depressed and does not want to go down to meet her mother. She tells Ryudo how her mother was oblivious to Runa and Kurose's relationship in school. She did not want to trouble her mother. Therefore, she had not mentioned the complex dynamic that the two sisters had. It saddened Kurose that she could not learn to let go of her grudge. She truly wanted to get along with her sister. However, that grudge and those feelings of anger were hard to let go of. Her mother had the idea that they both got along super well. It also made Kurose jealous that she was the one who had invited her mother but she was giving attention to Runa. Ryuto expresses his concern and starts to walk over to her. Meanwhile, Runa had finished searching all of the building and the roof is the only place that she had not explored. She starts making her way up. Kurose asks Ryuto why he even cares so much about her when he was Runa's boyfriend. He offers his explanation that they were friends, classmates, and members of the pamphlet designing committee. None of that seems to please Kurose, who lashes out at him. She tells him the truth. She confesses that she was still in love with Ryudo. She liked him very dearly, and there was nothing he could do about it. That was because it was her feelings, her emotions, and her freedom of thought. She could love whoever she wanted, whenever she wanted. This comes as a shock to Ryudo, who does not really know what to say. In a shocking turn of events, it turns out that Runa had been eavesdropping on the entire conversation from the door. She hears everything about how her sister was in love with her boyfriend. A dark and clouded expression comes over her face as she leaves. She does not tell anyone how she heard everything that was happening. Kurose goes on to mention how Ryudo did not have to care about her feelings. That was because what she felt was deeply personal. Like her daddy issues, these feelings could not be snatched from her. She mentions how these strong feelings were a sign of her independence. She was in control of her life. In some weird way, this was what kept her going. Later, the pamphlet committee sits down in a vacant classroom with two teachers to finalize the design for the pamphlets. Runa had designed a super sparkly and pink pamphlet that looked really nice. Kurose had designed a monochrome pamphlet that looked more official and less childish. The teachers judged the two designs and claimed that they were both quite good. On one hand, the design that Runs had proposed obviously had some charm to it. The students would love it and it was quite good looking. On the contrary, Kurose's design had a certain appeal that the boys and parents would like. It looked way more official. A tough question is directed towards Ryudo. He is asked what he thinks about the design as a male and a member of the design committee. Now he has to choose between his girlfriend and the girl who confessed to him in secret. He decides to go for the safe option. He offers an explanation that the theme was for the future. Keeping the theme in mind, Runa's design was better. This was because the future should be bright and vibrant for the students. Runa is wise to his tricks by now. In a dead and threatening tone, she says that Ryudo should not lie. She hated it when he lied. This sends shivers down Ryudo's spine, who still does not know that Runa overheard the conversation on the roof. The teachers tell him to offer an unbiased opinion to finalize the design. Everyone's eyes are on him. He secretly likes Kurose's design a lot more. That was because it was inclusive and looked official. Runa's design certainly captured one's attention. However, it was very girly and directed towards the glam-loving teenage girls at the school. It would not be a good option for the adults and the males. This pamphlet would be given to many people, not just the girls. With a heavy heart and a careful selection of words, Ryudo answers. He says that Kurose's monochrome design was better. This shocks Kurose, and it disappoints Runa. The choice between love and honesty is a hard one for horny teenage boys. 